This is a brief training on how to write an effective letter to the editor with Solar United Neighbors. My name is Lisa Trope, and I am an engagement specialist with Solar United Neighbors or SUN. And I work with six of our states on our engagement efforts, both with our solar co-ops as well as our policy work. So I will share my screen and we will begin. First with an introduction to SUN or Solar United Neighbors. We are a nonprofit and we are a community of people building a new energy system with rooftop solar at the cornerstone. We work with individuals to help them install rooftop solar. And we work with communities across the country, everywhere from Tucson, Arizona, to Denver, Colorado, to Miami, Florida. We work with individuals in that community to come together. Those individuals often create a steering committee to be able to pick a solar installer. And then we also work with one-on-one -on -one support with individuals within that community to help them throughout the process of the installation. At the end of the co-op, individuals who do join and decide to install solar often are able to do so at a bulk discounted rate for going solar through the solar through the co-op. We also bring those individuals who have solar together with individuals who are simply passionate about solar power to join together and fight for our energy rights. So this is through solar policy because we want to make sure to continue to increase solar power across the country, as well as make sure that solar power is accessible to all communities. So what is a letter to the editor? A letter to the editor is a letter sent to a publication about issues of concerns from its readers. Letters to the editor are often in response to an article published by the newspaper. They do not have to be. So usually someone will see an article in the newspaper, for example, about solar and respond to that article. You also can just draft a letter and send it to the editor of the newspaper, but it is more likely usually for that letter to get published when it's actually responding to an, something in response to what the, the newspaper already wrote. The writer of the letter either is praising the newspaper and bolstering the coverage of the article or writing an article in opposition to the coverage. So if there's a pro-solar article, this can be a great opportunity to bolster that coverage. If there's an anti-solar ar article, this can be a great opportunity to push back against that narrative in the article with a letter to the editor. Why are letters to the editor or LTEs important? They are important because research shows that well-written, authentic LTEs can help to persuade not only the editors of the newspaper, but also re readers and decision makers or elected officials. So the editor of the newspaper, if they see that on a regular basis, their readers are writing or sending in letters about a specific topic, that can create the opportunity where the editor starts publishing more articles about that topic because it because he or she or they know that their readers are interested in that topic. It also influences readers, so it might allow a reader to know about a new issue they did not know about before, or it may allow um, the, the reader to learn something new about that issue. And then finally, it influences elected officials who carefully or often have a staffer of theirs carefully monitor the contents of letters to the editor to gauge public opinion on various issues. And it's even more impactful when they are specifically named in the letter, which we'll talk about in a moment. So essentially, letters can create a really great public discourse, and we get to really advocate for both pro-solar policies and push back against anti-solar policies at Solar United Neighbors. Also with these articles, it can be an opportunity to promote more so people going solar. So there are many people who want to go solar, but they may not even know where to start in the process. And a letter like this can let them know about sun or let them know about a solar co-op. And that can make a huge difference in bringing more people together in the city or the town that we're within to end up stalling in solar on their homes. 
So to recap, writing an LT is a meaningful and easy way to advocate for public policies, as well as promote more individuals going solar. So steps to writing a letter to the editor. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, but a good reminder, just like in grammar school, the first sentence, you wanna explain what it is you are writing about and make that very, very clear, especially for the editor who's going to be reviewing your letter and considering publishing it. So example here is I'm responding to the article Solar for All on March 24th. That is very clear and straightforward as to what you're planning on talking about in your letter. Then of course you have the body of the letter. This tells a brief personal story involving the issue or it can. It also can include a few facts or stats um, in this letter to really help support it. But people often remember authentic stories. So if you're really facts and stat, stat heavy, that's great, go for it. But it is always nice to kind of have that personal touch and explain why this matters to you. So you can explain why it matters to you, your family, your business, or your community. And then the close. This is a really important part that often can be left off. So it's always important to ask the readers or an elected official to take an, a specific action. So a few examples is contact your decision maker or your elected official, sign a petition, vote a certain way on a bill, testify, or join a solar co-op. So this really helps um, make your letter even more impactful when it is published. So here is a few examples. I'm asking that you look into joining the Northwest Indiana Solar Co-op today. So that is very clear after maybe you're talking about solar or you would be talking about solar in your letter, what you're asking the reader to do. And you could even link to the website if you wanted. Another example is this is why I'm urging Senator Bennett to support bill number 202 to support net metering. So this specifically is asking your elected official to take a stance on a bill. And it's also notifying the readers that there is a bill uh, that, that now they will know about. So this can really be a great way to bolster your message and to get more people to take action around solar energy or whatever issue you're working on. A few tips and to note, assume your audience knows little or nothing about this issue. So as solar nerds, it can be really easy to get into the weeds, which can be fun. However, we wanna keep this big picture. I often think about if I was talking to my grandma about solar energy, she knows a little bit about it, but not much. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of a policy or maybe you have um, a young child or a niece or a nephew or a cousin uh, that knows a little bit about this topic, but not much, act as if you're writing the letter to them or to someone who just doesn't know much about the topic so that anyone who reads your letter can easily understand it. Also, keep your message to no more than three important points. So there are a million reasons why we support solar you might want to talk about economic resiliency, you might want to talk about economic independence or equity or climate change, and it can be really overwhelming and these letters are short they're usually 150 to 200 words so just pick a few main points you're going to focus on and in future letters, you can talk about those other topics. Letters should be creative written with passion. And if possible, personal, as we talked about. People are really curious about other people's opinions. <laughs> so the more personal you can make it about your story, about why this is important to you, often the better. Something to note is that many newspapers will require personal information. So your first last name, your address, your phone, and your email. This can be a little bit off-putting as to why they're asking for this information. This is essentially just to make sure that you are a legitimate person who wrote this letter and um, that you didn't just take you know, a template letter you found online, that you are who you say you are. That information will not be published with the letter. Usually your, your first and last name will be, but your address and everything else will not. So just something to note, you most likely will hear from them also to verify. And also if you're getting published, they will contact you or they usually will contact you, not always. And then two other things to note, to submit your letter to the editor, you can find 
where to submit the letter on your newspaper's website. So if you're not even sure what newspaper to submit to, there's a few different options. If you're in a smaller community or just in a town or even, yeah, a smaller community or town, it can often be great to submit a letter to your local newspaper um, because you are connecting with people within your community and it's more likely to get published in a smaller newspaper. Um, you can do that by just Googling what is the newspaper in my town, right? So it's great to just look up the newspapers with a simple Google search that are in your town. And then once you find an article you want to respond to, you can go and find the page that shows you the guidelines for how to submit a letter. Usually it's going to be an email address or a form on the website that you submit your letter um, to the newspaper with. Or there is also an option to submit to a statewide newspaper. So for example, I live in Colorado and our statewide newspaper or our paper of record is the Denver Post. And so that is also a place where you could be drafting a letter and submitting for, pub for hopeful publication. And you're gonna be reaching a much broader statewide audience, which is also great. And you can some figure you can go to the website and figure out how to submit your letter um, through finding their LT letters the editor page, and then it will give you guidelines for how to submit. And then something else to just note is that these letters are pretty short and to the point. Usually there's a word limit of about 150 to 200 words, occasionally more, but that's the general consensus between 150 and 200 words for your letter. So you really have to make a point um, in a short amount of words. Here is a sample letter. As you can see, I highlighted the introduction sentence, the body in blue, and then the call to action or the ask at the bottom. So very clearly this states, my family installed a rooftop solar array in 2017 because it was the right thing to do for the environment and producing our energy lowers our electric bill. So it's very clear right off the bat to the reader and to the editor what this letter is about. This letter is more technical in fact and stat heavy. Nothing wrong with that, but as you can see in some of these bo this body paragraph, this is less of a personal story and more focused on policy and um, policy. But as you can see very clearly, again, the reader knows what, what, is, what the topic is and what the writer is trying to um, get across. So eliminating net metering would discourage millions from investing in solar systems depriving all of us of the economic, environmental, and public health benefits of solar energy. So very clear and to the point. And then finally, there's actually two asks for call to action at the bottom here, urging the governor to take action, as well as asking the readers to sign a petition. Usually we do one ask, but you're welcome to do two, since these are both small, or you know, the reader can sign the petition, that's pretty quick and to the point. Um, and this is really great, again, to bolster whatever you're writing about in the letter, whether it's asking the reader to do something, asking an elected official to do something, or so on. So that is the end of the training. Wanted to uh, give you all some final resources. We, ho we hope you found this helpful. So the first thing is that if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can reach us at Get Involved at solarunitedneighbors.org. That's G-E-T-I-N-V-O-L-V-E-D at solarunitedneighbors.org. We are happy to answer questions for you. Also, if you have drafted a letter and you would like us to review it, we are happy to do so. So please send us that email address. And then finally, if you get published, we'd love to hear from you. This can also be a great opportunity if you're comfortable with us really bolstering your great letter and putting it on our different social media channels and so on. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you get published. And then lastly, we have an opportunity for folks in six of our states right now. So those states are Colorado, Texas, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, and Indiana. We are creating a letter to the editor network. And what that means is that you would be added to a listserv. On this listserv, you would receive one to three emails a month. In those emails, you would have um, a link to an article around solar. You would have a few talking points and possibly a sample le letter to help with drafting your own letter. And then you would also have guidelines and instructions for how to submit your letter to the newspaper. This is a great network that essentially hands all of the resources you need to you in your inbox um, one to three times a month. 
And if you are not enjoying the listserv or the network, you can unsubscribe at any time. But this is a really, really great way for us to bolster the message of solar power in those states. Your commitment joining the network in either Colorado, Texas, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, or Indiana is that when you receive those emails, if you have the capacity, you draft a letter in response to the article. You do not have to draft a letter, but we highly encourage it because the more letters that are submitted on a regular basis in response to articles, the more likely one or a few of them get published. So if you're interested in joining those networks, you can also email us at getinvolved@solarunitedneighbors.org. You can put in the subject line, I want to join the LTE network and then let us know what state you're in. If you're not in one of those states, we plan on building out these networks over time. So feel free to also email us and let us know. And then the more folks we get in each of these other states, we will start building out networks. So let us know, hey, I really would love to build a network in Minnesota or I know, wherever you may be. Thank you so much for your time. Please don't hesitate to reach out. We hope you found this helpful.